How's everyone going? We're going to hang out for a few minutes and see if a few other people pop in. I've had a couple people asking about these things, so we'll give it a couple minutes. I should probably be trying to do these live, you know, dual cast and try to set it up and push them out on Facebook too. Um, try to help people with any questions that I might be able to answer along the way. Like I'm any expert, but some people got, you know, ideas and some people, you know, have other ideas. So it's good to mix them up and see what, you know, develops out of that. So we'll give this a minute and see what happens. It's been a few days. I've been a little busy in the last couple week or so trying to get a bunch of stuff done. Now that it's starting to warm up, I'm going to get a lot busier because I've got some remodeling work I need to do. Got a bathroom I need to totally go through and then rearrange part of the house. This part that I'm in right now, a spare bedroom here, going to be redoing a couple of the rooms here and adding a room and readjusting another room and making three rooms out of two rooms and a little area in my uh, uh, living room area behind my front door. So I've got that's the work that's going to keep me busy. So that's going to be fun, but it'd be nice when it's done. Have a new bathroom and new rooms to deal with and um, neither of the rooms that I'm setting up will be in our C room. That'll be going in, you know, my master bedroom. Um, I'll set up a little area in there and get a little station set up for now. But got to rearrange the things in the house, make it a little bit more livable. But at any rate, let's see if a few other people pop in here. It's been about a, man, a couple of minutes so far, so I guess. I'm um, going to go over the uh, Sky RC corner weight system um, a lot of people are used to looking at these units and there's a you know the four scales and a head control unit and it's all wired up um, this is the bluetooth it's a brand new setup i think from sky rc it's not much more maybe a month or two old um, i just ran across them a couple weeks ago maybe three weeks ago and i'm looking at the corner scale systems and the options out there and you know, there's some nice ones at two, three, four hundred dollars, but they didn't need to spend that much. So I was looking at Sky RC and just trying to find the best price. And this thing in my search popped up, which is the Bluetooth. Oh, wait a minute, what's this? And I started looking at it, and it was a you know it's a very sweet little unit. No headpiece, it's all Bluetooth, so it works on your mobile or your laptop or your uh, pad or what have you, iPad or uh, tablet. Um. I know it's Android. I think they've got capable for i um i or uh, most Apple items. I'm not an Apple user. Forgive me. Um, so around the iPad and the Apple uh, mobile phones and stuff, I believe they can use it. But I know it's Android. That's what I'm using. Obviously, uh, Windows based as well. So it was you know the price of the head units were anywhere I seen them from ninety nine to one hundred and twenty nine dollars with the you know the older version with the you know central head. Um, this was 119, so it's right in the same price range. It's not like it's 50 dollars more or anything like that. It's 119 dollars. Um, the best price I found was 99 on the uh, corner scales with the head unit from Sky RC. So this unit was basically 20 dollars more um, than what I would have purchased the head unit for. But not having the wires to handle, to deal with, to get tangled up, to break. I'm an old musician. I don't play much anymore, but you know, wires, they're not made to be twisted, bent, you know, sometimes they'll do all right with that stuff, but they'll wear and kink and break and that causes problems. So the fact that this thing was Bluetooth was one of the selling points. So it took me a few times to set it up, it, you know, not really a few times, it took a bit to get used to it. A little bit of a learning curve. I haven't used many Bluetooth items. Um, for me, this is a, cell, a telephone. Um, I don't use, I never liked the pagers back in the day, um, the, I did have uh, what Nextel, so I had the you know boost or the Nextel um, walkie-talkie, which was great because I'm a communicator. I I can type fast. I'm good with my hands as far as typing. I you know used to on mechanical be able to do 55, 65 words a minute with one error. So I mean the typing part ain't bad, you know, you know the thumbing on the thing is bitch. But I like to hear people's voices. I like to hear the inflection in their voice. It's so cold, so so cold. 
trying to communicate with text. You know, it's like writing letters, but even writing letters, you could at least see something there and there's a, a physical connection to putting the ink or light on the paper. Um, you, you know, use certain things and that's just not there in the digital world. So, you know, for that, you know, for me, it was, it's a phone, but with this Bluetooth stuff, the way things are coming around, it's uh, growing on me and I'm getting used to it. But with this setup, yeah, this is pretty sweet. So pretty much what you want to do is get your units and you'll have to download the uh, RC Gears app from SkyRC. And you, of course, your Bluetooth unit will have to be compatible to be able to download the system. I'll make sure we got these. That's the left front. These are all labeled. So that's what you got to do is you got to fire them up and then label them left front, left rear. And, you know, get them positioned right rear. And you'll go through the process of calibrating and everything else. So pretty much you download the RC Gears app. They come with batteries, turn them on, turn on, you know, open up the app. The app will start searching. It will find them. And we'll go through this now. That I've already got it all set up. I'll show you the basic setup once it's doing it. Um, but the initial setup, it takes a little bit. It'll find them. And once you, you turn one at a time, that's why I did. So I turned one on and then started my app and let it search. When I found it, I had to assign it a position. So this one, I turned it on and I assigned it to the left front, obviously, by the LF in front. Um, grab the next one, I assigned that one to the right front and button until it was done. Once you've got them all assigned, then you need to calibrate it. Um, and you have to calibrate each scale. And to calibrate the scale, you need a 2,000 gram you know, balance weight, um, calibration weight. So I went and I picked them up. It was 20 bucks, 1885 or something like that on Amazon, free shipping, a little bit of tax. So it was like 20 bucks total. Um, that's a big, I mean, look at the damn thing. To it. Uh, I was like, oh, that's going to be pretty big. I didn't realize how big a 2,000 gram calibration weight would be. This sucker is huge, but 2 kg. So what you'll do is you'll calibrate it and you'll have to calibrate each scale, put it on when you're done calibrating it or you're done assigning it. The systems automatically will shut off when you're done with it. So when I assign this one, it shut off. All three of them were going. I turned them all on um, after a minute and had them all going and then assigned them. So once you assign it, it shut off. That way you knew you're done with it and you go to the next one and assign it. Same thing with calibrate. When you calibrate it, as soon as you're done calibrating and you calibrate it, it shut off. Then you can move to the next one. That way you know that one was calibrated. So it wasn't like, did I calibrate that one? Did I it was kind of easy to follow with the way they have the firmware and uh, program set up. So you get your 2,000 gram weight, then you calibrate it. So you're all done. You got everything set. You're looking good to go. You're ready to start doing some weighing. Let me flip these around so you can see the lights. You won't see these on the back as much, obviously. And I got this from RC Mart. That's why the sticker's here. It's where I bought it from. Um, the guy on eBay... It might even have been RC Mart's eBay account did have them listed. Um, they're $119 and $8 shipping. I bought them directly off the RC Mart website. Took about 10 days ship to get here, but they offer free shipping on the RC website. And buying on eBay, you're going to pay taxes. Buying directly from RC Mart, which is a Chinese company, you're not getting charged state federal taxes on that purchase so it was 119 bucks shipped to my door so i can't complain about that shipping was you know at the other place eight bucks so that brings the price down if you add shipping into 111 bucks for the unit really um which is really in line with the with the uh head unit with wires so pretty much you're all good to go you're gonna go and turn your scales on they'll turn on and start blinking on the bottom just got a little button a little battery Lock swivel battery tray. Turn that one around. And get this one on. So you turn them on, they're off, going, and they're blinking. And now you open up your app. So get up out of here. I don't have the password, which is fine. And then open up your app, your gears deal. And it comes up, you know, Sky RC corner weight, and it starts searching. You can see the, the blue dots here. This is the, the weights. So I'm going to put this back here because it's going to search and locate them. So once it searches found all four of them, once you've got them assigned, it will give you this one. And now it's finding them and getting the password. Now it's good to go. So we'll hit our button and there you go. 
it is empty and ready to weigh. And that's once it's done and calibrated and assigned, that's how easy it is. And I love the fact that there's no cords to hang up on, to pull, to move something, or jake to the scale around. Now you got to move it. Just pick your rig up, set it around the centers, and your numbers start bouncing. And I'm going to go ahead and move this one back so they are a little bit more centered in the wheel just to make sure everything's good. And, of course, it's looking backwards for you guys. It might be. I don't know how in the video if it's playing the right. I think it is. Um, I got to put my eyes on so I can see here. So you're looking at the unit. It tells you each scale side weight, um, 284 on the left. Well, that seems to be off. It wasn't that far before. Let me kind of reset here. Just because they're a lot more even than that. They look. Of course, I have moved a loot. I don't have the battery in there. But anyways, and get this thing to switch you back around. So we are, uh, yeah, that, that's looking at least a little square. 266 on the left front, 222 on the right front, um, 611 on the rear left, 656 on the rear right, with a total weight of 1756 right here. Our biasing for rear to front, we are at 72% rear and 28% front. Trying to see if this thing will focus on this a little better. Get it in here. Still not wanting to focus on the, the stuff, trying to focus on the back thing. It's the only bad thing about this camera. And then, like I say, you can see it's kind of hard to see. But basically, we've got 28% front bias. With no battery pack in it, no body, no body post. I still got to put that stuff on it. 72% um, bias on side. And then here, side to side, you can tell it's showing 50%. It's 877 on the left side to 879 total on the right side. So our side to side balance is uh, at 50%. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw the battery in here. Watch, I got this thing kind of loosened up here so I get my battery in and out kind of easy. And I'm going to move it around a little bit. And we'll put the screws in because those little screws you know, are a gram or two each. By the time you're done, that you know, moves your numbers. So now I got the battery in there. And it's up to 1977 weight. Now my bias is 70% rear and 30% front. Now I'm going to pull the battery forward all the way. And you will see that change. Now we're at 69% in the back and 31% in the front. So it measures that shift. Um, let me see if I got something. Let me grab this other battery pack and just stick it up in the front area. Now you can see the front went up to 852, 853 from it's at 609. Put that in the front. And now you can see your, your balance, you know, 427 on the left, 425 on the right. Balance at 39% in the front now and 61% rear bias. Now, obviously, if we move this to the center, um, that's going to shift our weights around again. We're showing a 33% front, a 67% rear shift balance now. So, yeah, this thing is really simple to use. It was a little tricky firing up, a little tricky just because I've never done it before. I'm not a Bluetooth guy, so I had to make sure my phone was set right. So I could get it, get the app on. Took a, a minute. Nothing, no hiccups, no problems. Just took a little learning curve on my end. Um, but other than that, this thing is sweet. It's super simple to use. And one of the nice things, it auto shuts off. So you remove your rig. Let me pop this battery off so it doesn't fall somewhere. Move you over here for the minute. So it auto shuts off. But as long as you leave it on, like if my phone went dark and the app stayed running, these things would stay on but you're done using it you shut your app down when you shut your app down boom your lights start blinking and now one minute from this point all four units will automatically shut off if you try to go underneath it and hit the button and turn it off it'll turn off but then it will turn right back on so this is the one thing i've noticed i had one the other day yesterday that didn't want to shut off and I actually had to remove the door and pop the battery out of it and I was doing something with my phone at the time, so I think it got worked out a little bit about me shutting the app down. But 
these lights automatically shut off here in about another, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds here. It's a, I got it set for a minute. Um, you can, I think you can adapt that in the settings on the phone and I'll open that back up in a minute. I'm just going to let these shut off here so you can see how it works. Kind of neat. Um, it's all done automatically and they just stop blinking and pop. Um, well, should anyways. <laughs> Um, we'll let that go. Then I'll open the app back up once they're all turned off, and we'll go. There we go. There it goes three of them. Let's see now. Let's see if this one shuts off again, because I think this is the same one that didn't. Oh, there it went. Oh, what? No, it's still on. This is the same one that didn't shut off yesterday, and I'm not sure what's up with that. That just started happening the last couple, first couple times I used it. They all shut off normally. I see these three aren't blinking, but this one up here is still blinking. So what I ended up doing yesterday, you know, kind of having a little fight with the door because it didn't want to pop open, is taking it and removing the battery, battery pop, and just taking the battery out. I don't know why this one is doing that. It's not a big issue, but it will drain your battery down if you're not paying attention. So you just, you know, I just loosen the battery, throw it back in. It doesn't automatically turn back on. It stays off from that point. But yeah, yesterday that one did this too. I don't know why that's happening. Um, but other than that, this thing is really, really a nice piece to use. Um, put this back in here. Get it set up. Lock it back in. I find you know using a Allen wrench with a shorter arm is a little easier than a big ass screwdriver or anything trying to get in and out of there. So that's basically the scales. So let me go back in here now in the app. I don't know. Actually, this might be a good test because I'm not sure if it's going to find anything because it's looking for the scales. Should be okay. Even though I got them turned off. Yeah, see, it says device offline. So if the scale's off, it won't even go into the other program it's trying to but it doesn't um and it's kind of light it really doesn't yeah the maximum connection of four reaches is trying to put there isn't much of a setting option you actually got to go into the system so we're gonna have to fire them back up for a minute and we'll let it fire up and you'll see the thing they'll start lighting up and bouncing around that's because it's acquiring them it's you know finding them now in the mix and it's starting to, you know, lock them in and make sure they're all working properly. So waiting for the right front. Come on now. There's a password needed, so it's in there. You got to put the password in. The password was 0000 when you first start. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to delete this right front. I'm going to delete it and we'll let it reacquire. See, now it's blinking again. So let me go ahead and close the app and then I'll restart it so we close it all four should start blinking now we'll restart our app and let it pick them back up he picked up two here Shit. there it grabs it grabs them all up right front left left right left rear right rear Unassigned scale, that's the one I just did. And this is where you go zero, 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 zero. And that is the right front. So we push right front. Okay. Here we go. Right front. They're all acquired again. Now we'll see what it does and shut out. Now, once you're into the program, now you've got your settings here. You can push this up here and get into your adjustments. Of course, you got language. Your units can be in grams or ounces. Um, the calibration, now you'll use that if you want to recalibrate. That's where you'll need your 2,000 gram weight. Um, change your password from the 0000 so you can protect it so nobody else can get into your stuff. 
auto power off this is what i have it i've got it set all at one oh, oh i see the left front's at five minutes let me move that back to one minute hmm. okay why isn't that oh okay that's right i gotta put okay whoops There we go. Now they're all at one minute, so you can just auto power off. And that may be why that one didn't. I could have had it had it flipped around. But well, let's go back into the auto power off. Okay, they're all setting at one minute off now. And then you've got a firmware version. There is a new firmware. I did update it. It recognized that there was a firmware through Bluetooth, and it asked me to update right away. So that was an automatic setup. And this is just the about setup. Just tells you a little bit about the apps. Real simple. Um, very easy to use. Now, again, we'll go through and we'll double check that. And we'll shut her off. Close the app off. Shut off. They'll start blinking. And we'll let them go. And hopefully the uh, last one auto shuts off now again. Sometimes um, with this app, I have noticed over the years with, you know, cell phone apps, sometimes they get a little buggy and you just got to you know, reassign or, or re restart the program. I'm assuming and presuming these aren't going to be any different in that respect. But other than that, that's been it, man. This thing's been really easy to use. I'm going to get a tablet or maybe even a laptop so I can have a bigger screen. Got to have my readers on to see the damn thing. Um, and like I said, for me, this is the phone. I don't want to get stuck to using this <laughs> bitching thing for anything else but a phone if I don't have to. I don't do, you know, Facebook on this thing. I try not to text on it. You know, when I'm away, uh, working away from home, when that happens, I, uh, I watch videos and stuff. But I really want to need to get a laptop because I really detest being tied to this thing for anything else than a phone. Seems kind of trivial. But when you come from the old school, when I had phones, it was tied to a cord that was stuck to the wall when I was younger. And mobile phones were a thing that didn't come in until I was, you know, already an adult and be, you know, becoming, you know, working and having a family and stuff. So I was, why I do love technology and this stuff's killer. I don't want this thing to become anything else. I don't want to have to be walking around like this all day, stuck in my phone, like. 90% of the popularity or pop mail to the public seem to be today, especially our younger generation. This is a phone. It's used as a phone. Laptop's a laptop. It's got its uses. I find myself to be a lot happier that way because every time this thing dings, I don't care. So that's about it. I was going to try to knock this off in 10 minutes, but we're at 23, 25, but pretty simple to use. Yeah, if you're looking at buying a, a corner weight system, you can spend two, three, four hundred dollars in some of the systems out there. There's some really nice systems. This thing or the head unit for a hundred dollars, hundred and twenty bucks is pretty decent. For a hundred and twenty bucks, this thing is the cast me out. Small box. I just put store it right in here. Um, makes it really simple. This thing has been, yeah, and the other one went off this time. Cool. So it auto shut down like it's supposed to. So yeah, sometimes you might have to reassign things and they don't auto on when you hit the pops. You actually got to hit the button so you can move them around and not worry about inadvertently turning them on unless you actually push the button on the bottom. So while they're sitting around, you won't turn on. They take a big, uh, a large um, flat round battery. Uh, I used to call it hearing aid batteries. These aren't hearing aid batteries, obviously. Um, it's bigger than a 2032. Um, next time I open it up, I'll, I'll take a look and I'll make a note of it. But yeah, it's a, about the size of a Susan B. Anthony, maybe a 50 cent piece, not quite a 50 cent piece, but at least a Susan B. Anthony, bigger than a quarter. Um, so yeah, they do have some fairly large um, batteries in them. But that's it, man. That thing is, like I said, you know, once I get a, a new tablet, I've got an old Nexus here um asus nexus but unfortunately the bluetooth is so old it won't recognize on this newer bluetooth technology so i can't even use it for that um i could use it for a few things but it won't take up the bluetooth for the teakin 
but it will work with the uh, Hotwire 2.0, but not the 3.0. So now I'm going to have to update my pad or get a laptop. I think I'll probably just go back to a laptop just because I like the versatility of a basically a full mobile computer system when I'm not at home. I'm you know been using a desktop style computer since the mid '90s or you know late '90s, um, and that's been my pretty much go-to computer. And of course, back then phones were you know Nextel and Sprint, but they were just mobile phones. You didn't have smartphones and all this stuff. So I never fell into that mobile phone trap of being a smartphone user. By the time smartphones are on, I was already set in my ways. That's still just a phone, and I'm going to use it as just a phone. And I think my life's a lot happier for it um, compared to what I see some of my other buddies who have gotten into using their phone. They're tied to it as bad as their kids are. So that's it. I just want to kind of run through that real quick. So thanks for hanging out. Um, take a minute, like, subscribe, share. Let other people know I'm noob to the no prep scene. I've been doing RC as a basher for 10, 15, 20 years, give or take. Um, I did a lot, uh, you know, when I was a kid, of course, that in the early 80s or actually early and mid 70s, um, by the 80s, I was in high school. There really wasn't a lot of RC back then. So bashing was kind of a really, you know, new thing, obviously. So, you know, most of it was air and there was some surface, but it was kind of mild. I mean, I can remember $120 ESCs burning up because you got them in the grass in the morning with a little bit of dew. And that little bit of dew is all it needed to fry out a $120 ESC. So I was in that hobby when it was way early. Uh, <clears throat> but I just never really got into it heavy until I was like, you know, a little bit older and had more time and money to do it. So, yeah, let everybody know. I'm learning this stuff. I'm getting heavy in the no prep. I got three rigs. I got a low C22 in my going to get it ordered box. I've got my sold truck just went by. Um, I've got the Traxxas, you know, drag rig, the truck on eyes. And I'm probably going to go ahead and grab a team associate because I haven't even grabbed a team associate yet. I'll get the builder's kit because um, I like the build. I like doing the builds and stuff. And I'll get a builder's kit. And I'll probably just build it up stock and throw this uh, Castle Sidewinder 4 and 5700 in it just for shits and giggles um, for a car for my buddies to run. And that way they got something decent to run on the load or the associates. a pretty solid platform. Um, I think that'll work out pretty good. So, you know, buddies, the old lady, kid, whatever, friends, cousins, neighbors, whoever wants to run a car, they can, you know, run that one all day long. I'll leave it fairly stock and just go with it at that because hey let's face it team associated didn't tell you know plastic tubber did come in second um at cots this year so it's not that it's track and there was a traxxas for anybody like there was a traxxas low cg chassis who was saying traxxas is junk that was in the top 16 in that race in uh, vegas at king of the streets a couple weeks ago that was a tuner's race. You really had to understand not only your rig, but everything else. Um, but I think I'm going to have to. Okay, somebody else pulled in. I thought, oh, mail's coming. I got some mail being delivered here, too. So I'm going to have to take off. But thanks for hanging around. We'll talk to you guys later.